up, guys? NYK31 here. I'm at an 18. It's that time. Tampa 2 series. NYK's Tampa 2 scheme. I find it funny. <laughs> I've been doing Tampa 2 scheme, temp playing Tampa 2, doing Tampa 2 tutorials for, gosh, almost 10 years now. Since Madden and NCAA 10. So basically a decade. And now, finally here, Madden 18, that's the meta. And in this series, I'm not going to show you how to mindlessly play 3-3-5, three, three, nickel, uh, Tampa 2, down after down after down. That's not what I do. There's a rhyme and reason for, you know, what I call, why I call it. Because really, you know, can you get away with that against people that aren't that good and don't understand how to attack cover 2 without running to um, an ebook or a YouTube video? Yeah, you'll beat those guys, but you're going to eventually run into guys who can make reads and you're going to need something else. And I'm going to go over the coverages that I play, why I play them, and you know how I you know, turn it into a cohesive system. Because really, back when the Tampa 2 was in its heyday in the late 90s and you know mid to early 2000s, you didn't just line up against Tampa 2 against everything. The Tampa 2 Bucks, for example, they would roll John Lynch into the box. They would play man one with a whole defender. They would still do all those things. Their base coverage was the two deep. Like you see here, um, you know, you have your basic Tampa 2. Your, I'm going to go over the various types of uh, cover 2 coverages in the game with your corners playing the cloud flats. You have your outside backers here and the uh, vertical hooks and the mid read. Now, what you see people do this year is this. I mean, really the Tampa 2 in reality is a glorified cover three. Now, the reason why people are hot routing that mid-read hook to the deep third middle is because the mid-read this year is broken. Last year, you didn't have to do this. The mid-read will would have gone to the middle and matched vertical with tight ends and slots and all that running into that area. This year, they get sucked down. They will, you know, kind of just drop the 10 yards and just kind of sit there and let a guy run right by them. And also, and this is the weird thing about it, hot right in the middle linebacker to the middle third also causes your vertical hooks to play like they should. The mid-read, for example, combined with the vertical hooks, the vertical hooks will get sucked down as well. I'll show you an example. Let's get out of this and show you four verts. We'll just run out of dime. Tampa 2. Four verticals. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And you can do this, you know, all day long. That vertical hook on the right won't carry him, and the middle read will just squat. The one on the left will do his job. I don't know why the one on the left will match, but the one on the right won't. When you think about it, in reality, it should be the opposite. So the back is leaking down. You know, he should be ready to rally and come off when the ball is thrown, but be that as it may. So you see here, you can just pretty much hit that hole whenever you wish. And if you go into trips, it's even worse. You see, it's just a complete disaster. You know, Earl gets there, but you see, you know, there's plenty of space to make that throw. Now, if we change the mid-read to a deep third, watch the difference.
both vertical hooks carry, and you have your deep run through. And really, the reason why the Tampa 2 was so dominant in the mid-90s and the um, early to mid-2000s was for a couple of reasons. One, it was really the perfect foil to the West Coast offense. The league hadn't evolved into this um, spread, pass-heavy league that we see now, which is dominated by 11 personnel, one back, one tight end. Teams are in that type of set about 75 to 80 percent of the time on average throughout the league the league is now a spread league with sub packages on defense you're in your nickel dime quarters dollar sub packages more than you're in your base four three three four and goal line that's just a fact of the modern nfl but you know back in the mid to late 90s to early to mid 2000s the first decade of the 2000s the league hadn't trended entirely to that direction yet so you still had a lot of two back being played and you didn't really have a lot of teams that spread the field a lot. So, so the Tampa two with its emphasis on speed by your outside backers being able to not only uh, carry vertical hooks, but also to rally on anything short as well as your athleticism by your middle linebacker being able to run with uh, tight end posts and also be able to um, crack down on anything thrown underneath, it was perfect. And it terrorized the league for a good 10 years. You had um, a whole chunk of the league running either Tampa 2 or the Dick LeBeau, Dom Capers 3-4 zone blitz. It was pretty much almost split exactly half and half. And you look at the Super Bowl winners from that time period, you'll see that. You had the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They ran that Tampa 2, of course. The um, greatest show on turf, Rams, ran Tampa 2. The Bears, when they had Erlocker and Briggs, were running Tampa 2 and Charles Tillman. And you also had teams like the Colts, of course, the Dungy Ball Colts with Freeney and Mathis, Tampa 2 team. Jets ran a lot of Tampa 2. Tampa 2 was all over the league. Marvin Lewis ran a fair share of Tampa 2. It was everywhere. And, you know, what the Tampa 2 did, it finally forced the West Coast offense to have to evolve. Where you started to see, around the turn of the first decade of the 2000s, you started to see, or before that really, you started to see a evolution with how routes were being run and by who. You gradually started to see the phasing out of the split back of the near and far formation and the routes that were being run by the back and the fullback were now being run by a tight end and a slot receiver. And then what you saw, you saw offensive coaches, they're not stupid. After seeing it for 10 years, they got more creative on how to attack it. You started to see um, angle routes being run by the back underneath a either slot receiver or tight end, forcing the middle linebacker to have to play in between. If he went with the vertical with a tight end, the angle route was open. If he cheated up on the angle route, the tight end was open. You saw more diverse high-low combos like smash and levels coming into the fold with those vertical hook linebackers skating out. Before they close, you run multiple uh, receivers, like say, you know, Lockett and Baldwin, who just... Let's hot route them to something like this. And let's keep, yeah, let's keep, let's keep the back there. So I have a levels concept here. So what will this do? The linebacker is now skating out of there. You have your choice of two receivers breaking over underneath him. So stuff like that came into vogue. You saw, you saw more stick concepts. You saw more ways to get the ball out of there quick and into space before those linebackers can converge on you. And it really made it difficult to play Tampa 2 as a base coverage. You know, a good zone running scheme was the Tampa 2's worst nightmare. The Tampa 2 is reliant on penetrating offensive linemen, playing their gap, 
and the linebackers playing off of them and cleaning up. Well, in a zone blocking scheme, you have those linemen being tandem blocked, and then you have a few hundred and twenty pound lineman going right into the lap of the linebacker. So unless you were just monstrous up front like the Vikings were back when they were running Tampa 2 for years and years with the Williams wall, the Vikings would just laugh at you if you tried to run inside because they had 700 pounds of mass right in the middle. You know, not every team had that. That's why the Colts, when the Colts were running their Tampa 2, they would roll Bob Sanders into the box. Also, power run would be a problem. Let's run a generic power here, and we'll go with 4-3 under Tampa 2. Again, it's math. When you add in an extra tight end, you add an extra gap, the D gap, and then you add a fullback there, all of a sudden, out of two deep, you have the defense outnumbered. There are more guys blocking than are accounting for the gaps, since the safeties aren't involved in the run fit. So you saw seeing more of that, and as a result... The Tampa 2 gradually phased out of the league as a base defense. It's still very good in long yardage and playing with a league, league, with playing with a lead, but down in, down out in the league, you see much more three deep, single high, man one, quarters, and cover six than you see straight Tampa 2. There are very, very few teams that I would classify as a Tampa 2 team in the league right now for that for that very reason the new tampa 2 is how the seahawks play the seahawks system is based off of the tampa 2 front wise but they basically invert it they play you know cover three out of it with match principles as well as other concepts as well and you see that spreading throughout the league the seahawks the jags the um niners the falcons all those teams run what I call the new Tampa 2, that cover three um, pattern match under front, where they play a mixture of techniques, both, you know, match and spot drop cover three. They play man one. They play some cover three cloud every now and then, but not often. Uh, they basically stick with that same type of formula. It makes sense when you think about it, because Pete Carroll, he coached under uh, Monty Kiffin as a youngin, and he developed that system when he was at USC and put it to the NFL when he came to the Seahawks. So that's a little history lesson on the Tampa 2. And really, because of what I described, it's actually a little bit over-effective in the game because the short passing game in Madden isn't that good. You don't have a whole heck of a lot that works. You know, things like double slant, they aren't spaced very well. And when you combine that with the way these defenders can move so quickly laterally, it's harder to deal with than it should be, which is why people feel safe just playing it down after down. Because unless you know how to beat it with what is in the game that you can work with in the short passing game, you're going to struggle. So segueing into that, I'm going to talk about the variations of cover two that are in the game. I'll also show you some um, gameplay clips as well. Just to give you the basic idea of what or of how it works. You have Tampa 2, Cover 2, Sync. Cover 2, Carry. Cover 2, Hard Flat. And I play a nice chunk of Cover 9 and Cover 3, Cloud as well. Cover 2, Show 4. It's basically Tampa 2, where the defense comes out and the corners align and the safeties align and how they would in a quarters alignment. So we'll come out in, you know, 4-3, Tampa 2. Because so what you want to look at, you want to look at the technique of the corners. And we'll dial up smash spot. This is a good cover 2 beater. Whoops, wrong play. Oh, one thing to keep in mind is if you do change the middle linebacker to the middle third, the one drawback to that, it removes him from the run fit. It's not showing in practice mode, but in the game, it will. He'll just skate out of there. He won't honor his run fit at all. So if you do do that, you can still user that player and your vertical hooks will carry correctly. 
but if you user him, it'll compensate for the fact that um, he won't feel his run fit responsibility. So anyway, in a straight Tampa 2, you have your corners aligned in um, a cloud of flat technique. What that means is that they're going to jam the receivers and funnel them inside. Now in Madden, they always funnel them inside, no matter the quality of the corner, which is a little bit annoying. You know, should, they should make it where, you know, your better press coverage corners get a real physical jam and reroute and your, you know, weaker ones, they run the risk of missing it or having him, you know, reroute the wrong direction, stuff like that. But that is not the case in the game. And basically their job is once they jam and reroute is sync to a depth of between eight to 10 yards to cut off the sideline streak and the corner route. You want to do that to shrink the window between the safety and the sideline. Like if I run four verts, for example, what you'll see is that there will be a hole there. See the jam, and you see how he sinks? You want to have him sink there to shrink that window, and if you have a safety like Earl, he'll break on it. See the jam redirect inside? You see the vertical hook reroute and sink. You see, once he reroutes, he sinks back to shrink the passing window to the sideline. Let's say if I run smash, that's designed to put that cloud flat corner into um, conflict and make him have to choose between crashing down that hitch or sinking back to the um, corner route. And that's how Smash beats cover two. You see, I had the same concept on both sides. And you also hit the flat. And again, the idea of the Tampa 2, you want them to throw here. Again, the idea is to have guys with good closing speed and good tackling close on that and limit it to a three to four yard gain. You want to dare the offense to do that every single time. Cover two hard flat. Let's just run inside cross. You're going to squat under the flats. That's very useful. If you can get someone to throw a shallow cross late, they'll be, they'll be there to cut it off for a short gain. Now the downside to that is you're going to be hurt against the vertical. Because again, they're, you know, committing to the flat. And it's up to your safety to be Earl Thomas and get over there. But you see the hole is going to be a lot bigger to the flat. Not to the flat, but to the sideline. That's where you can be hurt by the smash corner. Now here's smash again against hard flat. He's committed to the hitch. That'll open up the uh, corner. It's asking a lot for a linebacker to break with the receiver that deep into the outside. 
you know what teams will do as well. They'll detach the tight end and force either a linebacker or the slot guy, whoever it is, to walk out with him. It's probably going to be a linebacker if you're going to be in a nickel set. They'll force a linebacker to walk out like that. Look how light the box is. You know, airmail at that time, but you see the corner route's going to be open there. So that's your hard cover two, your hard flat cover two. Your cover two sink. Your cover two sink. Your corners are going to be in a soft squat. They're not going to jam. They're going to straight out bail. And they're going to commit to cutting off the deep sideline route. What I don't like is that sometimes those soft squats convert into uh, match coverage, which creates a whole host of problems. I'll show you in a little bit. That's going to open up the hitch. Only audible to a trips formation. You know, I'm going to run stick here with soft squat the solar receiver side, what that corner will will do is that he'll match it. That can be a problem because let's say the back's high receiver runs the slant and we do this. Whoops. There we go. So, you know, let's say that we have the receiver running a slant. Well, what if we send a drag that way? You see that there's no one there. I got sacked there. The linebacker is properly cheating on the slant route. I bring a shallow crosser in there. I can just outside pass lead that and it's off to the freaking races. You know? Lead it out here and, you know, go. But the soft squats are useful because they'll match vertical as well. But against that, you know, you give up the underneath. Now, cover two carry. What I think cover two carry is, I think that's the game's version of red two. Red two is what... Um, a Tampa 2 team would call cover 2 when they are inside the 20-yard line, inside the red zone. What you'll notice is that the middle linebacker, he's not in a mid-read, he's in a three-receiver hook, so he's going to match number three receiver on, you know, the offensive side. In this case, it would be the back if the back went out of the backfield and shot up the middle of the field. It just depends on route distribution. If we were in a trips formation, uh, that's audible to a trips formation. Let me get off the backer so he actually does something. So let me get off the backer so he actually does what he's supposed to do. And I'll control, I have my controller on the defensive end. He matches number three before sinking back vertical.
Let's pick a route where number three breaks out. Strong Flood, for example. I'm staying in 4-3 because the rules will say the same regardless of the personnel. It doesn't really matter. The corners are playing Cloud Technique. Cloud Flat Technique, so they're going to jam and redirect and play in between the flat and the corner. Playing corner first before rallying to flat. Number three broke out. He now looks for work. Back inside. When the third receiver breaks out, he sees starts to match him until he recognizes he's breaking out. Then he sinks back to the middle to look for work. Number three now becomes him. The vertical hook is going to take number two. So you generally want to play this, cover two carry, inside the red zone. You don't want to play it too often on a long field because, you know, think about it logically. If the three receiver becomes, say, a guy like Julio Jones on the solo side, you got a linebacker on Julio Jones covering him across the field. Good luck with that. So really, it's best served when you're um, inside the 20 or in those third and five to third and eight type of situations. But just be careful about calling it on a long field and long yard situations because you might hang your linebacker out to dry. So, you know, those are the basics as far as Tampa 2, the philosophy behind it, the, a little bit of a history behind it, and the different techniques that are played in the game when it comes to various cover two coverages. I'll show you some clips of a game, kind of walk you through it so you can see it in um, gameplay footage. And then in the next episodes, we'll talk about the coverages I like to mix in. I like to mix in cover three cloud, cover six. I like to play uh, certain variations of cover three. Um, some are safer than others. And also when I call two men under, man one robber, and when I blitz. And also go over personnel and who you want where, playing what roles. I'm going to cheat a little bit and show you one of the complimentary calls that I do. This is cover three drop. The reason why I like it, because you have a spy dropping into the hole, hence the name, that you can play some games with. There I put him into a mid-read, and he's able to take away the um, vertical seamer. You see he comes out in a spy, but I had a feeling that four verts was three verts was going to be coming and you know you can't trust these safeties all the time in the deep middle so that causes him to clog the window up and I can use her the weak side also by default is a two deep shell so you don't tip off anything as far as what you are in pre-snap on third and ten here 3-3-5 nickel. Truth be told, this is a bit of an overpowered formation. You know how I said that a zone blocking scheme is a murder on a Tampa 2? This formation, it really fouls up the game's zone blocking logic. The offensive linemen target the wrong second level um, defender all the time. Way too often. How many times have you been running against this formation and you see a linebacker just come in and just clock your running back? Um, Comes in, coming in untouched out of Tampa 2. reason why that's happening is because the offensive lineman peeled off and targeted the wrong backer. But I'm going to come out in 3-3-5, three, three, nickel, Tampa 2. Going to do the deep run through here. This formation, you got to look out for that post, so I'm on that vertical hook. Got to look out for the screen as well. I drop him off, and... The corner comes in free as the fourth rusher because the guard and the tackle double teamed Watt and the back is going out on a route on that side after the block and release. So we get a sack there. The corner is just too wide or coming from too wide for the offensive line to recognize and then for the back to uh, consider him a threat. So that's why that happened as far as the sack is concerned. Here I'm going to be in 3-3-5 wide 9. Tampa 2. 
against the same formation. I'm going to get caught up close to the line of scrimmage here with Whitney Merciless. For whatever reason, well, it's play action, that's why. I'm able to almost get back there. If I was in position at a snap, I'd probably get there in time to knock that loose. When you got the Texans, you got one of the stronger fronts in the game, so you can get a block shed like that out of um, too deep. It's a good luxury to have. All right, Tampa 2 again against Deuce Close. Always got to be on the alert for tight end angle. Just got to make sure that you guess the right side. Here I do. I sit on... I try to play in between, but I'm a little bit too slow. That's going to happen. And he's in a no-huddle situation. Well, he's, he's not yet in a no-huddle situation. But, yeah, you know, you're not always going to make the perfect play as a user. Sometimes you're going to screw up, or sometimes you're going to be a little bit late to recognize something, and you'll get beat. You know, that's just part of being human. <laughs> you're not going to get everything right all the time. Otherwise, you'll be pitching shutouts all the time. But, um... What am I in here? Yeah, now I'm going to be in two men under. Now I'm going to outside shade the corners. That's going to get them lined up square. Watch the outside corner move. You squared up now. That will give you a press all the way across the board. I'm just lurking underneath, and that's a bit of a force by him. And I'm able to get the INT there. So that's a little bit of a glimpse of how I think. I'm going to show you one more clip that shows you a bit of an oddity. Sometimes, when you come out in some sets and you try to hot route the middle linebacker into a deep blue, the mid read into a deep blue, it doesn't let you do it. it hot routes him to a seam flat. You can get around that by base aligning and hot routing him, but here I just want to here I want to keep a man alignment. So when this happens here, you can user him and it'll still um, have your vertical hooks play the correct depth. Just really weird. So there I'm usering, usering. It's third and 18, so I'm not worried about the underneath there. And you saw my vertical hook still carry. Basically, as long as you do anything but mid-read the middle linebacker, it'll work. So there you go. That's part one. More to come. Hope you guys enjoy. Talk to you all later. Peace.